slowing down of China's GDP growth. Okay? China's GDP growth has been declining, as you know, slowing down, I should say, to something which is perhaps more normal. We call it the new normal. Right? And with this, there's been a decline in the demand for inputs into the economy, particularly the commodities which Africa was precisely supplying to the Chinese economy. So this new, this new normal, uh, I don't really need to tell you this of course, but it consists of these, different, these three different um, stages or three ingredients as it were. Um, and domestic consumption is now put forward as, as, as a, a key element. Um, and this has meant a decline in exports to China. Okay? So we see here that Chinese exports, the blue line, has decreased since 2014, 2015. It's decreased quite substantially, it's a slight uptick in 2017, but this is quite significant. We think that the, many African countries, their economies were very reliant on exporting to, to China. So as China tries to restructure its economy, its, its need and demand for a lot of the stuff which Africa is trying to, to sell to China uh, has gone into decline. And also, perhaps more importantly for the continent as a whole, um, apart from the bilateral trade figures, is the effect on the global economy and global commodity prices. And certainly what we've seen recently is a collapse, or a major decline in global commodity prices across the board. And this is why it affects Australia as well as Africa and other, other parts of the world. All those countries which are reliant upon exporting their commodities to, to China have uh, experienced uh, problems. As I mentioned, Africa is not unique in this sense. This has been made much worse by, currently, American-China trade tensions. Okay? Uh, this has, has impacted upon commodity prices again. Mm -hmm. So America and China have these disagreements, but all other economies, particularly in Africa, which are reliant upon primary commodities, they suffer as an indirect result of, of the conflict between Trump and, and Beijing. So, in actual fact, what we're predicting now is a lower growth in, in Africa by about 2%. And uh, this is a combination of various factors. The trade tensions, um, policy uncertainty uh, in the United States. We have no idea what Trump's going to do uh, in the next hour, never mind tomorrow. We have slower growth in China, which I've already mentioned because of this new normal. We have generalized lower commodity prices across the board, which is a result particularly China, but also now I mentioned the, the trade dispute between China and, and, and uh, the United States is an impact. And generalized global financial conditions means that we're going to probably get about a 2% drop in Africa's GDP growth. Um, it is quite a lot, absolutely. To make kind of matters worse, as it were, for Africa, just to... Um, uh, the World Bank has forecast that commodity prices are unlikely to drastically improve in the next 10 years or so. And this is their price index uh, forecast from 2014 up to, up to about 2025. And one of the things you might, you might notice that all of the commodities, with the exception of timber, right, wood, is expected to fall. And of course, the extraction of timber is not a sustainable uh, industry for African development. So this is a problem, of course, for all countries around the world which um, are reliant upon their commodities, but in particular for, for continents such as Africa, which is so heavily reliant, uh, this is a major, major issue. So this is annual change in gross domestic product for, for, for Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole from the World Bank, and you can see from around 2014, it's really declined. Okay? gone from the high points of the Africa rising period here, 2010, okay, to going down. Okay? And this, is a, this is a problem which, which many African governments are now facing and are having, to, are having to face up to is how do we adjust to the new conditions, new global conditions, but also the new relationship with China, with a China which is no longer consuming, as it did, huge amounts of African commodities. So, Conclusion, I think that the, the foot price forecasts and the revisions 
suggests that certainly for the medium term, commodity prices are likely to remain lower than they were during the commodity super cycle, which coincided with the period of Africa rising. Sub-Saharan Africa is going to have to adjust itself to this new normal, a new normal in the sense that its GDP growth is not distorted by high commodity prices, but also a new normal in terms of the Chinese economy and China being able to drive African growth as it perhaps did in the past, which was celebrated, by, I have to say, by many African leaders as, as being the future way, right? the future for, for their economies was to tie themselves quite closely to the Chinese economy. I think what's happened, certainly since around about 2015, has shown that that was a rather foolish idea, right? that building your economy on external demand rather than trying to build your internal economy try to diversify and industrialize and just try to make it auto-centric as much as possible uh, was the way to go, not to rely upon the, the, the cheap and easy way of relying upon external demand from a country such as China or, or, or any other country. So Africa rising then, I would argue, was a kind of a blip. It was a kind of an, an anomaly, a period when we did see high GDP growth, but as I mentioned, that doesn't really tell us too much about what was happening to the actually African economies. And when we look at the structure of the African economies during this period of so-called Africa rising, we don't see any structural transformation, any meaningful structural transformation. There was just, it was driven by external demand. And so what this means is, is that the post-colonial project, which people like Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba, all the African heroes said back in the 1960s that Africa had to be truly independent, had to be autocentric, had to develop their own economies, to be industrialized, diversified, etc., not to rely upon the colonial powers, not to rely upon external demands, to try to change the relationship which Africa was inserted into the global system. These guys were talking about this in the 1960s, and we're now in 2019. The problem still remains that the vast majority of African economies have not followed through with what Nkrumah and others were saying they had to do in the 1960s. Uh, and they still remain very, very dependent upon external demand. What has changed, of course, is we've got the diversification of new actors, China, Brazil, India, whatever. But we have not got a diversification in terms of the economies. They've stayed the same. And this is the major challenge facing Africa. And I think that the Africa Rising story uh, demonstrates this quite clearly. So going back to The Economist, Back in 2011, the economists were saying that Africa could be on the brink of an economic takeoff like China and India. Okay? Fast forward it only four years, so it's not a long time. And you see now they're saying, oh well, you know, actually, nah. So we're not we're now aspiring Africa, not rising. The Economist has again changed its tune, but I think what, what I've tried to show is that beyond the surface appearance of high GDP growth, which the media latched onto as, as somehow indicating the health of African economies, when you look at what really happens during a period, unfortunately, a lot of things stayed the same, and this is really the lesson from the period of who we now call Africa Rising. So, thank you. Well, we have a lot of time for discussion. I, I propose giving him an extra five minutes during the break. So, yes. let's, let's take a break for yes. 10 minutes and then we'll come back. He needs <laughs> Okay. And, and if, you, if you need some snacks, we can go next door and buy. <laughs>